So, you know, it's the last episode of the year. And let's face it, 2020 has really been different. It's not a year we're going to forget anytime soon, is it? By different, do you mean having bhindi and paratha over Christmas weekend? It is different. Uh, that's not what I actually meant, but we'll get back to that. That's another point totally. But I'm trying to be serious here for once. You know, um, COVID has really touched us personally. We've lost loved ones. We've had to isolate. We've adapted to working from home or studying from home. People have lost their jobs. Uh, we've not met anyone during any of the big festivals. We've not gone to restaurants unless the government told us to. We've not gone to movies unless it was a premiere you were invited to. We've not been on holidays. Uh, what else have we not done? Forget all this. Any. We haven't actually hugged anyone. Mm. And that's really sad. We, there's been no physical contact with anyone. Uh, outside of our social bubble. Outside of our social uh, bubble. Forget you and me physical contact. That's a different story. Okay. We've been uh, in and out of so many um, lockdowns as well. You know, one week we were in tier two. And then a few days later we were in tier four. This is London, by the way. Tier four means that you just can't do anything. And uh, what else? Has anything else happened? Well, there's some good news as well. That mm. There's been a, a vaccine. And um, well, that's good. But the economy has just grounded to a halt. Jobs have got lost, as I said. And people are actually finding it hard to survive. Are you hoping to take over Her Majesty's job on Christmas Day? Was that your speech? Alternative Christmas speech? No, After no. Christmas? No, I'm just saying that I hope next year things go a bit more back to normal. Yeah, I think all of us do. But the scary bit here, as you're saying, there is a silver lining to the COVID cloud, which is the vaccine. But I think the scary bit is that no one really knows when all this will be truly behind us and whether we shall ever be able to return to the things that we love doing the way we loved doing them. I'm not even talking about new normal, old normal, none of that. But things that really matter to us, as you're saying, meeting family and friends, hugging your near and dear ones, celebrating big events along with everyone who's really a part of your life, a part of your uh, narrative, as it were. When will we be able to do that again? Well, I think I speak on behalf of most people when I say goodbye and good riddance to 2020. Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We are partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters. And we're everything else in between. Now, um, this is probably the first time that we've not celebrated Christmas with our extended family and friends. Forget Christmas. We've not celebrated Diwali or any other big festival. Yeah. We've, we've done it by ourselves. Yeah. Uh, just our bubble. Yeah. Um, what have you taken away from it? What, what, how do you feel about it? You know, a few days out of Christmas. I feel that while celebrations have been scaled back, while we've not had the luxury of being with, uh, ex as you're saying, cousins and grandparents and parents, and it's just been the immediate family. I think it's also been a huge lesson in the way society now packages these festivals. I think it, it had, we have come to a place where it has become about more about the presence under the Christmas tree. Whereas, as we all know, we've said it so many times, when you gather on Christmas Day, on Diwali, on Eid, on Holi, any such occasion, it is those who are part of the celebration, those who are around the Christmas table, they matter more than the presence under the Christmas tree. And I think the world has got to a point of excess. You know, we had we have all become so... Um, uh, commercial. Fixated, so commercial and so fixated on buying the right things and, you know, buying X number of presents that we've forgotten that it's actually emotion that binds us together more than anything But else. I think this year we've realised. Yeah. This year has been so different, so exceptional. Yeah. I think we've realised that it's not just the tangible commercial gifts that you have it's yes. also the it's the people we are missing the, most. the people that you have yeah that's what we've missed the most and uh, with all due respect to technology while it is a fabulous thing and it has been the lifeline for so many who've been unable to step out of their houses over the lockdown but it's not the same thing having your parents and grandparents on zoom as it is having them around the table and pulling a christmas cracker with them and hugging them and having fun saying that so many people have learned how to use microsoft teams zoom yeah people who never touch a, a tablet yeah. or an iPad. 
I think this is also a time of realization uh, for most of us that even though celebrations are scaled back, even though we're all in our own social bubbles, those of us who are fortunate enough to still have a roof on our head, to still have a job, to have that celebratory meal on the table, we are so fortunate because there are so many people who've been severely affected by the pandemic and they're not as fortunate as we are. And therefore, I think an extra dollop of gratitude in everything we do going forward, right? Because um, we can moan about a thousand things and naturally everybody's had to change their lifestyle. Everybody has had to adapt to the new normal. But as long as you still have things to be grateful for, it is important to remember that there's vast majority of people across the world who are probably not even as fortunate as we are. And therefore, I think it's also put that spiritual element, it's brought that spiritual element back into a celebration, which is otherwise about lights and presence and, you know, ha having good food and celebrating the finer things in life. And this period is also a very lonely period for many people. Mm. So you, you said it's called the, something, right? This period. I between, think it's called Twixmas. Twixmas. Many people will say something else. It's that kind of twilight zone between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, when nothing happens. Like every day is like a Sunday. Mm. You mean you're in a state of limbo where you are on holiday, but you're not really on holiday, that kind of thing? Yeah, you're in a state of, I don't really know what's going on. Mm. And, or, I, I, or what day it is. And as you're rightly saying, it can be a period of great loneliness for people, right? Mental health, I know, has already been uh, something people have been talking about a lot in the last seven, eight months in the light of how dramatically the lockdown changed our lives and, you know, almost caged us in our own homes. And I, I heard you had done quite a few um, little interviews on mental health on your radio show. Hadn't yes, you? I did. With it's and doctors. it's and you're, are they doctors? Are they called doctors? Or are they called doctor, doctors? psychiatrists, psychiatrists, you okay. know, I GPs. Thought, look, that's the word I for GPs. They're all extremely keen to stress to the general public that if you feel that you're grappling with mental health issues, even if you know you've never had them before, or if you feel that even if it is a small thing which is getting to you, you know, don't ignore it and know that there is help out there. This is when every time come Christmas time, because as you're rightly saying, more so in this pandemic ridden year than it's ever been. But every year I see in this Twixmas period, as you're saying, all these ads for Samaritans pop up at every tube station because they know that there are people who are probably feeling that while the rest of the world is enjoying and celebrating, I'm the only one who, you know, who f feels lonely and isolated and I feel everything that I've is, been a failure. And everything is amplified and enhanced. Amplified, enhanced, magnified. And I have so much respect for, you know, whether it is the child line, whether it is the Samaritans. And now, this year, because of the pandemic, uh, the government has a helpline as well for those who are struggling with mental health. So I think Christmas 2020 has been an eye opener on many counts. While we are um, sad about the fact that it's just us and none of us have been able to meet extended family members. We're also happy that it has made us aware of those who are less fortunate than us. And it has made us aware of the fact that mental health is something that no one should be struggling with on their own. If you need help, please reach out. And it's not something to be ashamed of either. If Absolutely. You're, if you're, reach out and ask for help. You know, ideally, this episode should have been the wrap up for the whole year. What was 2020 about? Hmm. What we read, movies we saw, what we ate. But that's just all gone out the window. It's gone for a toss. Because I think nothing really mattered. Uh, cinemas, were, cinemas were shut, mm. restaurants were closed and uh, bookshops were closing down. Yeah. That's what actually happened. You know, looking back on 2020, in fact, there are loads of people who have written about it as well. Tell me what you think that the arts has taken. I know it's all about saving lives right now. It's all about uh, rolling out the vac vaccine to as many people as possible. But the arts has taken a very big hit, right? All these, you see all these, not just the Sir Andrew Lloyd Webbers, but even theaters smaller shot, theaters yes. and independent groups and singers and musicians and all those who are uh, freelance uh, artists, right? Their profession has taken a very big hit. And this has always been um, a, on, an ongoing debate and discussion that society needs science and medicine as much as it needs things to nourish its mind and soul. And the arts and entertainment, they provide that, right? And because exhibitions have been, uh, there have been no exhibitions, there have been no... Uh, there have been no events. Concerts, events, such. anything. This, well, has, this has yeah, taken it's a huge not just toll. Art. I mean, it is arts, but it's also hospitality has also taken yeah. a huge hit. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what, have, what has been the one big message that you take away from 2020 I think what has lockdown taught me what has lockdown taught me? I think that 
I've realized that people are much kinder mm. than we thought, than we give them credit for. Mm. And I've seen neighbors helping neighbors, mm. people going to get the shop, people standing in an orderly uh, queue, queue yeah. doing things looking mm-hmm. after one another yeah because i think it is the normal impression is if this if the pandemic hadn't happened it is a doggy dog world and you know it is we live in a society especially in big cities anywhere in the world they say that gone are the days when you'd have a chat with your friend over the f- garden fence london is famous for you know, not know, even knowing who's next door if you talk to someone on the tube you know yeah. people think that you're yeah. something wrong with you with you yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and i Move think it's seat. the same it's the same in uh, mumbai and all the big new york all the big cities right that people don't even know who their neighbors are um but the pandemic has taught us as you're saying that people are still very very kind they're people who are going out of their way to help others they're people who put themselves um uh, you know in not in the line of fire but they've risked their own lives in order to be able to keep society I mean, safe for me uh, two people come to mind straight away hmm. uh, one is in the united kingdom and one is in india hmm. united kingdom it has to be uh, captain tom moore or captain sir, sir tom, tom moore sir tom moore now. yeah he's captain sir tom moore is he 100 He's angry, yeah, he don't know and, it and, in the lockdown. And um, he walked up and down his garden with his, uh, whatever that thing is called, the walker, hmm. and raised, got, raised more for charity than the government did, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, that was incredible. incredible. To see that kind of determination from someone who you would think would, that's the last thing he wants to do. But just to see that kind of generosity from people who are getting nothing back, but just the joy of giving. It's wonderful. And from India, let me guess, it has to be Sonu Sudh. It, ha- sure. it is Sonu Sudh, correct. Yeah. I think he really brought out that you can be a, as big a f- Bollywood film star as you want. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you've got that thing inside you that that thing that makes you want to do and help people who are troubled or yeah, stuck or less fortunate or abandoned. Yeah. Use you your clout as a yeah. film star, you know, and absolutely because And he's, he's not like the biggest film star. He's not the biggest film star and he plays baddies on screen. He's known to play baddies on screen. It's not even that he's always the leading hero, never. Right? They're planning to make a movie on yeah, his, the, his, his. His book is out, I think, uh, in the next couple of days. Yeah, a very nice thing he said. He said, if you plan to, do plan to make a movie of my life, uh. can I please star in it? Yes. <laughs> Which I thought was very nice. And his book is called I'm Not a Messiah because everybody now has put him on a pedestal saying that, oh, you know, you, you, to us you are God. And he says that I'm only doing. But you know what? For, uh, for you, anyone who doesn't know in the context, he, people who are stranded, yeah. he helped them get home. He organized buses yeah. and laborers rides. who had no money yeah. to because their livelihood kind of shut down overnight they are the people who earn their wages every single day and put food on the table he made sure that they went back to their villages you're right he was helping out uh, students indian students in That's other parts right. of the world as well who were Correct. stranded yeah. when lockdown happened and if you read about because sonu sood became such a big name this became such a big story to come out of bollywood to come out of india there was a lot written about his life as well and it is it is very very poignant to know that someone it takes a great personal loss for people to sometimes arrive at these oh, I junctures and he lost his mother life. early on and he says that you know i've never been able to uh, cope with the loss of my mother and everything that i'm doing i feel as though it is my mother's directive from heaven she's asking me she's that, guiding him. she's guiding me and she's telling me that son this is your duty and this is if you are in a position to help this is what you should be doing so it's a beautiful um, very very emotional story now we've uh, established that 2020 has been an absolute downer mm. but and i say this with all my heart there has been a silver lining well, mm. a slight silver lining that um, we have got a covid-19 vaccine and um it's one of the first ones approved was in this country and my dad was lucky enough to be one of the first ones to get it mm. um i think it was about 10 days ago mm. and he has to take um, the second dose very soon and he had no side effects yeah and it was quick he said it was in and out yeah. and i think that's a great thing that this vaccine is coming out and as more and more people get it mm. the i know there's a new strain but as more and more people get it they're going to adjust it and mm. hopefully they'll be able to cope because there was a lot of debate over how the government approved this vaccine in record time and the government had to really go out and assure and reassure the public that no corners had been cut yeah because it's not a race yeah that no one's health and safety has been compromised yeah. that an independent body has approved the vaccine and it's a good thing and you know we were curious about the fact now that papa has it of course we heard it first hand from him but we were curious about how gp surgeries would be able to have fridge freezers that could go minus 70 minus 72 degrees or whatever it was yeah. but now 
as we know, it's not being given to you, at least here in, in Barnet in London. Your dad didn't have to go to his GP, but he actually had, was directed to a local center very close to his house, yeah. which is where, and as you said, touch wood, he's not had any side effects. He's looking forward to his second top up and he was in and out in 10 minutes. So it's being done very efficiently. When this was announced, because people were waiting with bated breath, all eyes were uh, on the UK because we are the first country in the world to approve it. The government announced a hierarchy in which people would get this COVID-19 vaccine. So right at the top, as you would imagine, people in care homes, those who look after uh, elderly patients in care homes. And then it comes down to people over 80, people over 75, those who are clinically extremely vulnerable, even 16 to 64 year olds with underlying health conditions. Uske baad, it is over 60, over 55. And it stops at aged 50 and over. I'm happy to say that I don't tick any of these boxes here. <laughs> you're trying to say that you're still in your 40s. Yeah, I'm very much so. Still in my 40s. But what I'm worried about is that if this is the path it is following, and like I, no, so, I, I agree with this. Well. No, I, I agree with so it. Right but yeah. does that mean by the time my turn comes, it's actually going to be November or December next year? By which time will the jab even be effective? Well, but that's a good thing, that they can adjust the jab hmm. for all the new strains that are coming out. They, hmm. They're saying they can cope with it. Yeah. So by that time, they'll have that much more data. Yeah. And You're right. And hopefully, suppose. it'll hmm. be that much more effective. Effective. They're also saying... that You may not even need two doses then. Hmm. A COVID-19 jab, they're saying, works pretty much like the flu jab, which means that it is effective only for that season. So next year, if it comes around to next year, then it'll have to be adjusted, as you're saying, anyway. It's probably not going to be the shot that your dad got this year. So it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Something to finally feel good about. And is that it? So no, you've just this got... wasn't the only good news. I'm glad you asked me, is that it? Because something else happened as well. What so happened? We finally got a Brexit deal. Oh, God, you're talking about Brexit. So by the time people hear this podcast, if they hear it in uh, January 2021, hmm. Britain will be out of the European Union. Hmm. This was like Boris Johnson playing deal or no deal with about 300 boxes. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is no great deal. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing to be shouting from the rooftops, but it's still it's a deal. You know? Yeah, what did your prime minister say? This is my Christmas present to the country. Yep, this is, I think he announced it... Uh, on Christmas Day, did he? If, uh, or Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Yeah. If it is his Christmas present, let's just hope he's kept the receipt, is all I can say. But, uh, yeah, come 1st Jan, we're going to be out of the union. I don't know why you're looking so smug, because you will no longer be able to just grab your British passport, jump on the Eurostar and hop across to Paris as though you were just, you know, going to West End. This is not smug. This is my sunny disposition. I just have one of those killer weight jelly. Oh, I thought it was the lamp. No, no. Anyway, so yes, finally, even though, as you say, 2020 has been a write-off, it's been a dog's dinner, call it what you will, we finally have some things to be hopeful about. Yeah, and while we're on the subject, before we just say bye, I also want to um, quick mention to all those people who are, who are already fragile, who are grappling with isolation, loneliness, depression. You know, it's out there. It's very mm. real. Mm. So just to tell them that, you know, we're here. We're here, we're all in this together. And in a small way, our small contribution to sharing our thoughts and our lives and our celebrations and anxieties with you, uh, we at Shabby and Man are just happy that we're able to reach out to people or talk about things which hopefully resonate with people uh, who listen to us all across the world. So you're not alone, we're all in this together. And let's hope that next year is much better, much brighter. And we'll see you very soon. Very soon. Until then, look after yourself and uh, enjoy um, the last few days of 2020. That's right. Twixmas, as we call it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.